Hello, Internet, and welcome to Tissues of the Day. I am your host, Robert Mackay, and I'm joined by... David. And we also have a very special, amazing guest who is near and dear to our hearts, the one, the only... Michael Sousa. <laughs> That's right. That's Sousa, if you're wondering about it. <laughs> and we are talking the today about video games. Uh, speaking of things near and dear to our heart, we play them a lot. We've grown up with them. We enjoy them. And Michael Sousa is no stranger to video games. So he's <laughs> a perfect guest for this subject matter. Thanks for coming on, Dave. Uh, David, fuck. <laughs> I did this. I'm back. I did this earlier. It's because I keep looking at David's name when I'm saying your name. Michael. Stop looking at me so much. <laughs> I can't help but Zoom selecting you. Uh, uh, yeah. Hi. Welcome, Michael. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Uh, is there anything that uh, you are currently working on that you wanted to talk about before we dive into the show? Uh, I mean, not really anything like you know, special or anything, but I've been streaming my, uh, like I started playing among us online. And, uh, so I got myself a Twitch and I started streaming. And then sometimes if, when me and my boyfriend are playing a board game or something, I'll try and figure out a way to live stream it. Cause there's like a, a niche market for like, you know, watching people play video board games. <laughs> oh yeah. Any kind of game, right? Video yeah. board, you name it. In fact, we had a chance to do that recently. It was yeah. like a week ago, <laughs> which was really fun. And to actually see like the top down view of the boards and that, and being able to watch all that was pretty cool. Speaking yeah. You were, you ahead. were kind of like our, uh, our guinea pig on that. Cause we had, we had done it on our own from our own house and it's easy. Cause they just set up your camera and you just stream it that way. But we like, we played Villainous, Disney's Villainous, which is one of my favorite games. And um, having it worked because you had the game as well. So we were able to like Zoom meeting from your side and then film on our side and then like live stream the uh, the screen so people could see what was going on. It was, really, it was a fun little technical trial <laughs> yeah yeah no and if uh if video games are an example of where kind of these like twitch style streams can go to the point where they go into freaking stadiums and have lights and fireworks and shit going off yeah uh, it's like board games could do it too i think <laughs> they, they, they have to make up for the fact that you're sitting there what <laughs> yeah that would really be i mean i know there's like go tournaments and chess tournaments i i wonder what other board games could actually get up to that level i mean like a sorry tournament <laughs> the game of life it's like every time you you get someone ho uh back to home in sorry there's just like a giant lever that drops you into <laughs> a vat of water or something <laughs> oh and th th that would be the hollywood ising of it right like much <laughs> like the video games where they're like they know they're just people sitting in a chair at a computer they have to do all these effects around them because the person themselves isn't very entertaining yeah so if they had like a board game version like live stream of the game of life i bet they put them in actual cars and they would drive around a board and they'd have to put the pegs behind them <laughs> they get like children <laughs> yeah. and stuff uh, just a giant like a giant peg as their child yeah exactly i i want a giant peg for a child what about you david <laughs> um <laughs> answer that another hey, great segue child. oh he's so good at segues david um <laughs> michael if anyone wanted to follow your twitch what handle would they go for uh, at St. Michael, but it's Micah31 because Michael wasn't available. Oh, so you elite speaked it and threw some numbers and, and yeah. characters in there? Love it, it was like something from when I was a kid when I had to set up my Xbox name and I don't know why St. Michael, I guess I had a God complex when I was a teenager like most people do. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and it just stuck. <laughs> oh, complexes. Uh, write that one down, David. That should be a whole other topic for us to talk about. It's like a three hour episode where we're just like, who am I really though? Yeah. And we just keep going and going. Oh, uh, yeah. Precisely. So we're going to kick it off now into our first segment. Uh, I'm going to activate the Segway Bot 2000 <laughs> to make it happen. <laughs> Segway Bot, go. We've moved. <laughs> 
I think you were, it just sounded like you were shutting down. <laughs> you're just, you sounded like a dot matrix printer failing to like, like take someone off. spilt some water in you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you for that I segue, bot. That is what was happening. That was amazing. <laughs> this is our rapid fire question section, and we're uh, going to throw some questions at you, Michael, and you have to answer yes or no as quickly as you can. Gut okay. reaction. Don't worry about thinking about it. Uh, and we just want to pull a little bit out of you and get you to loosen up if you aren't already. Um, so, you ready? There's so I, many innuendos in there. Anyway, no. <laughs> bottom jokes everywhere. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, I'm as ready as I can be. He's as loose as he'll ever be. Uh, <laughs> wonderful. So, you ready? Brace yourself. David, start us off. Um, do you prefer books or films? Films. Sweet or savory? Mm, savory. Mm-hmm. Vanilla or chocolate? Vanilla. Are you a country boy or city boy? City. <laughs> uh, short partners or tall partners? I mean, I'm biased. My partner's tall. <laughs> so tall. <laughs> Are you a driver or a passenger? I'm definitely a passenger. Mm. Um, this is what I added today. Have you cleaned your belly button today? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> Lovely. Uh, in bed, more time uptown or downtown? Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> downtown. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, what do you have no patience for? Oh, God. Uh, how long do I have to answer this? Um, rudeness. Ooh. Do you prefer nights in or nights out? Uh, you know, I probably would have said nights in ages ago before COVID, but now I'm just hungry for a night out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what song might be stuck in your head? Uh, I'm blue. Abu di Abu da. <laughs> <laughs> what are you hungry for right now? Uh, uh, <laughs> an edible, <laughs> but I work tonight, so I can't. <laughs> um, cats or dogs? Did we ask this one? No. Oh, both. Ooh. Uh, I'm going to stop it there. I, I love oh. that. <laughs> it was so nice. Both. Everything. <laughs> all of the above. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. So based off that. Uh, what, what will we learn of Michael, David? What's your interpretation? We should do edibles together. I've gotten <laughs> really into them lately. I love, oh, well, cause I actually quit smoking. So I had, I picked up smoking after not smoking for like eight years. And then I smoked for two years, including vaping. I was able to quit that. And so during the pandemic, I was like, why not just quit smoking weed? So I quit smoking weed, but I still enjoy the high from time to time and so i've switched over to like edibles only and so yes when we're allowed to hang out i want to have a board game night and like do edibles and just like chill have all the fun i've gotten so into them um in yeah quarantine with family like i would be like well it's eight o'clock i'm not tired but i don't want to do anything so (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah that's basically as soon as i get home from work sometimes it's like oh edible (laughs) it's a a stressful day yeah you know what i learned from that one that i want to do with michael now based off that is i want to play a driving game where he's a passenger so that like i get to be the driver but he has to like deal with being a passenger in a video game so he'll like have to be like the side gunner or something where he's just like oh. he's, he so wants to participate <laughs> but he can't because he can't drive and i just want to see him struggle <laughs> i was like well that would happen because i only have my l so i'm always the passenger but i get it a video game passenger how much longer do you need the l <sighs> Well, we I had an L ages ago when I was a teenager, and I just never u- utilized driving because I took transit everywhere because we have pretty good transit, I I think, here. And um, so it just, like, faded away. My L expired. And then before the pandemic hit, I was like, okay, I'm turning 30 this year. I'm going to get my license. And then the pandemic hit, and I was like, okay, so eventually i figured out that i could still do it all so i got my l and then so did my partner fred and our roommate Alyssa. so we're just like a household of l's and we're all waiting until we can either afford to get like lessons because none of us have a car so we don't (laughs) i just want to see all three of you play like uh you know gta and like all drive cars horribly and just crash into buildings and stuff 
it happens <laughs> yeah <laughs> but like we use gta to exercise the demon of bad driving <laughs> mm. and then we drive exactly in real life that's and true. Uh, yes <laughs> and all other kinds of exercising as well <laughs> in that game well it's interesting like i as much as i have my license i have never once in my life owned a car i have always transited yeah. walked and i'm like i don't know how i pulled it off but i have because i well, just prefer it I mean, you live in Vancouver now, yeah. but like you grew up in Langley, so that's yep. surprising. Yep. And everyone else owned a car. Yeah. Everyone else got a car as fast as they could. And I just, I, I kept failing my L test. Um, <laughs> or then when I finally got it, I started failing my driving test and I just like gave up. I was like, fuck this. And <laughs> I just started using transit, but I was going to like Surrey Central for school and for work. And it was like an hour and a half each way. I can't even imagine if I was you know working or going to school in vancouver would be worse but yeah i did that for a brief while i was taking some post-secondary in uh like south marine drive area and i was living in langley at the time because my mom had bought a place out there and i was still living at home and so i was transiting from langley all the way to southwest marine drive and that was a freaking nightmare i would go with my mom when she left for work and like there was one day where like half the city was like late for everything because there was like four hour backup on the highway it was crazy well literally i got i was like three hours late or something like that for class it was insane that's insane it's it's almost like you might have just go the next day or sleep overnight (laughs) yeah sometimes it was like it was like four hours of my day transiting and then like eight hours in class. And then so by the time I get home, it's already like six. I barely have time to eat dinner. And then I'm studying and or doing whatever project for the rest of the night. It was uh, it was not a fun time. <laughs> Hence why I dropped out and became an actor. <laughs> <laughs> so your your motivation to become an actor was a frustration <laughs> with transit. I love that story. Uh, speaking of stories and discussion, we're going to get into our next segment. So, Segway. Segway bot, bring us into the next section. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Oh, God. That if was it, beautiful. Uh, this is where the rate, gonna... like, climb. Anyway. <laughs> it sounded like a motorcycle, you know, like picking up speed. <laughs> <Sort> <laughs> Um, this is our chance to have our theme discussion questions about video games. So the first one to crack us off would be if there's one thing games could use more of today, what is it? Michael. Yeah, I saw this in a little pre-show thing and I racked my mind around about it and I really don't really know. I think that games could use more, uh, a more dynamic playing feature, like the fact that we can do, because I play couch co-op a lot with Fred, and so it's like a local playing only with the two of us, or it's a one-person online massive multiplayer. You can't do both, and so I would love if we could have like a local couch co-op while also playing massive multiplayer online, but it's just not available for some reason, and I don't know why. Hmm. David, do you have any thoughts on this one? Um, yeah, it's it's really close to exactly what uh, Michael was saying. Just like, uh, like definitely more dynamic tech stuff. Like those multiplayer options, like would be awesome because there are plenty of those moments. I I'm a huge huge fan of like couch co op stuff, um, as opposed to uh, online co op stuff. Because I don't know, just having the option is great. But just like, um, like just like dynamism and like depth in general. I think there are a lot of games that I've played lately where like I sort of get what it's about within the first like two or three hours. And it just feels like more and more of the same of that stretched Mm -hmm. out over like 10 to 40 to 50 hours. Um, And sometimes I wish there was like that sense of discovery just spaced out over a longer period of time Mm -hmm. Um, because Uh, And we'll get into this later as far as like player types, but that's the stuff that I really like when there's just this like, I guess, move set that's like you can get by in a really simple way um, to start with. And then this is about video games, by the way, as opposed to like board games and stuff. But um, 
yeah, like you can get by. It's like easy to pick up, uh, but takes a long time to master. I think that's like the gold standard of the games that mm -hmm. I tend to enjoy the most. How about you, Robert? Uh, I am hearing a theme, a COVID theme, because my piece for this is social, like more social elements. Um, I'm fine with online or couch co-op. My preference would be co-op too. I'm like a people, person, extrovert, want to have all around me. And I just, I wouldn't be surprised if that is an influencer right now on our mindset during this period where we're just like, I would love to see more games that explore dynamic relationships and dynamic um, interaction between people, uh, like player to player, as opposed to player to game. Um, and I think there are some games that are exploring that have really tried to, the people who made Journey also made one or two other games that they were basically based off social is like you meet people in the vast interworld on a mobile device. I think, I think they're only mobile, but maybe they're on consoles as well. And the game, I'm sure David's looking it up, um, where you go and the intention is to find another person, connect with them, and then go solve puzzles and go on journeys mm -hmm. together in that. And journey was like that to an extent. It was first their first experimentation into it, but it was kind of a side note compared to this newer one that they've made. And I actually downloaded it and played it for a bit. And it was super cute. Um, you were these little, look like little monks or something in these little robes and you would make these little like chirpy sounds. So cute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and so like, uh, playing Overcooked, for example, is one that I played a bunch recently, and it was a co-op that I played online and in person. And there's just something like that game in particular. It's not so much about just the game, but it actually replicates something that, Michael, you probably are familiar with, especially coming from the serving world, is that like the kitchen space, you need to communicate. Like if you want <laughs> yeah. to like execute on food properly, you have to be like, I'm on zucchini chopping, yeah. I'm on plating, yeah. I'm on cooking. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, now in the real world, you don't have your kitchen flipping around and like spouting fire off the ground, but. Yeah, or like a yeah. lava or acid lake falling from beneath you. Just no, only at your work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, well, yeah, I'm gonna come back to that. Cause I also, I just played, um, Mass Effect Andromeda, mm. and I never finished it because I had played all three of the Mass Effect before that, and so I started Andromeda, and it was just like a whole lot of the same. It w like the first like couple hours is like okay, figuring it out, and then you're they're like showing you the new a new type of puzzle or a new whatever form of like uh, this you know defensive thing in this stronghold or whatever but then it's like the same thing and it's like 20 hours of that and i so that's why i didn't even finish it because i'm like i've played all three mass effects and this is not it's the same stuff over and over again mm. um but yeah i played over overcooked 2 with fred and we freaking loved it yeah. and it helped us because we we moved in right when the pandemic started like in april uh so we were like looking for a place together before that. And then we were like, Oh, do we still move in together? We did. And overcooked two was one of, one of the first games we started playing together. It was, uh, we played a, obviously local couch co-op and it just helped us with communication a lot. Cause mm -hmm. you have to communicate. Otherwise you're just like mad at each other and trying to figure out what each is doing. And like you throw throwing your plates to no one <laughs> over yep. the ledge. If you're yep. like, I'm throwing you this plate, <laughs> you have to communicate. And and I can attest to this because I've seen them. They are so much better in the kitchen. Now they can make a five course <laughs> dinner in like 30 <laughs> minutes. And it's not because they invited me over because they've been safe. No, it's because I'm creepy and I've watched them through the window outside their house <laughs> while they cooked and, and they didn't give me shit. <laughs> yeah. We saw him sitting on our garage roof. And they still with, didn't with give the me any neighbor's food. Cat. Next to the neighbor's cat, yeah. <laughs> I was just petting the cat watching yeah. me. <laughs> I've, I've had the experience of like editing video footage of playing a co-op game. And when I listened back to it, I, I was like cringing at myself. I was like, ah, I sound so rude. <laughs> and like would totally <laughs> try to adjust my behavior next time and be like, remember, say very quick please or a very quick thank you <laughs> like uh, yeah it's urgent and like watch the tone of my voice like not yelling <laughs> at people like all of those things that like when you're like in the moment um i'm not thinking about but then once i listen back i'm like oh i don't really like how i was coming across in that moment <laughs> mm. i know me and fred are so competitive that sometimes like 
we had to stop playing villainous <laughs> with each other <laughs> because we get so competitive and like mad when we yeah. <laughs> and because we can't play when you play two player it's like you're fading you have to fate the other person yeah um and yeah. you know you know something i would like to say too around this social social uh increase of social qualities in games is i don't want to see it relegated only to the mmos like i think they were the trendsetters of it and i think they start a lot of it but i'm like i i did that i did world of warcraft and i spent two years of my life and probably wasted way too much time on it but i want to see it integrated into simpler more casual games because i don't necessarily want to dedicate days and hours to building a character and like you know a campaign that's going to span a year yeah. i want it in those little quick overcooked games i want to see more of it there well that's why i like among us like i i literally just got steam a month ago maybe i don't know what took me so long yeah mm. Um, I know because I would always it's just like I would always play on uh, an actual console or something but you know the future is changing so and it's the future is now um, so I finally got Steve and plug I it. discovered <laughs> Among Us and it is it's kind of like that it's like a massive multiplayer online but it's not it's mm. you're you're constantly being shifted in different rooms with different people and you don't have to have to delve into a whole story or anything you're just in it for maybe 10 20 minutes depending on how long the imposter takes or something yeah. um so i've actually been obsessed with it and i stream myself playing it a lot <laughs> speaking of games that we're obsessed with these are the days of the modern day let's wax poetic on the past what kind of games were you obsessed with in the past michael uh like like Video game genres? Uh, it could be genres, could be a series, anything from the past. You could go as far back to Atari or whatever your first video game was. I played uh, um, Conker's Bad Fur Day on I the original that. Xbox. And I love that because they had a really dynamic... Um, it was like the first online type of gaming and it was before you had to like pay for everything with microsoft and i so you could do like a a great <laughs> you could do a great a great skirmish something fell in the sink in my kitchen <laughs> i was wondering i was like was that a cat at my house but no uh yeah so there was a really awesome skirmish you could do and you would like be on either the Te squirrel team or the teddy team and the teddies it was about the nazis and the first world war or i guess it was the second world war um and so like the teddy bears were the nazis and the squirrels were the allied and it was a vulgar and excruciatingly violent game way too violent for me at the age that i was mm. but it was so much fun because you could just like be in sort of like an open world but it was a contained map and set yourself up with like a bazooka in like a big you know high viewpoint and i don't know that was like the first game that i was obsessed with and i always wanted people to play <laughs> cool i, I never I, I remember hearing about it but never played it so yeah. let's let's get a measure of how far past has passed us first console david go my first console that I really owned and like had in my room was a PlayStation. Ugh, yeah, okay, you're younger. Michael. <laughs> uh, my first one was actually, I want to first, uh, Conquerors Bad Friday was on N64, not Xbox. Oh, okay. Um, but my first console was a Sega Genesis. Okay, yeah, and yeah, no, this is all adding up. Mine yeah. was an NES, an yeah. original Nintendo Entertainment System. Yeah. And prior to that, my first one I played was actually the Atari that my cousin had. Um, but my first console was an NES. Just, my just fir one. The first thing I ever played was an NES, because my aunt and uncle had one. My uncle is a huge video game fanatic. Like, he plays them all the time. He and my, him and my aunt, uh, him, yeah, and my aunt are like super sports fans. So he has all the sports games and stuff, which I never liked. Uh, but he did have Splinter Cell, which got me into that. I loved Splinter Cell. It was like a spy game where you had to be, um, you had to do things like quietly and in secret. And like, it was my first experience with that kind of game. Uh, but yeah, so I had us, I had, I played their NES and then I got a Sega. And then after that, I got a Super Nintendo. Oh, wow. Crazy. 
And David, what was like your game you were obsessed with in the past? Um, I mean, so many, but like I was really big on the um, PlayStation platformers. So probably platformers are just like really, really up there for me. If there's ever a, like when I feel that sense of like just I don't know, like I don't care about anything else. I just really want to go on this adventure. It's usually a platformer. So Mario, Spyro, Crash Bandicoot. Spyro. Um, yeah, all of those. Ratchet and Clank. You do that major... one? No, I didn't because I didn't oh. have a PS2. Oh. Um, then, yeah, and then the next console I had for myself was a Christmas present, and it was a GameCube, and so I was obsessed oh. with Mario Sunshine, and then a bunch of games related to that. But yeah, platformers are kind of my major wheelhouse and so related to it i also loved um smash brothers melee i was oh. never like great at it but it is in many ways a 2d platformer slash fighting game mm. yeah. Um, yeah so those are my jam i we... oh go sorry ahead, robert no no go ahead uh i my cousins had a gamecube and i avoided it for the longest time i don't know what it was about it i think it was the controllers but once they got super smash or smash at the time maybe um, I was hooked. I loved it so much. Yeah. My friend, I, you know how we all have that like one rich friend growing up? <laughs> I had one and she lived very close to me. And so she always had the latest console and she, their family were big on Nintendo. So I'd always go to them for party games. That's what introduced me to party games was like Mario Party and Smash Brothers and things like that. But for me, my first like real obsession thing I got into was JRPGs. RPGs in general, but JRPGs, because my first real game I played on the NES was Final Fantasy number one. The very original Final Fantasy. Played all the way through and played pretty much all of them up until about 10. And then I sort of stopped until it came back to 12 or 13 is when I picked it up again. I didn't play 10 or 11. Yeah, of seven. Which is beautiful. It's so good. No. No, because what I've found is as of late, especially during the pandemic, I have zero motivation to play video games on my console unless there is a social element. Unless yeah. I am co-oping it on the couch with like the small bubble that I have or I can do it online. Uh, I'm just finding I'm like playing it. I'm like, oh, I'm so I'm, like, I'm, I want to be, you know, I want to be doing this with another person. I'm like, I'm so loud. Yeah. I feel the same way I used to when I was a kid play online or like just on my own all the time, hours and hours and hours on end. And now it's like I try and sit down and play a game on my own. I'm like, I don't really want to play this. I, I, I've, i yeah, I think I'm more into the social aspect. That's why I always have or before the pandemic had people over for board games all the time because I freaking love it. It's just like fun and having some drinks and socializing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's interesting too, because I think, I think playing RPGs, especially JRPGs that really dove deep on this sort of stuff, but because I probably had the social element satiated during that most of my life, you know, during that, and so it wasn't as big of a focus for me, um, it made me love narrative and storyline and character mm. development. And I think that's informed a lot of what I like then in other types of media and why I also like just like performance and acting in that because I love characters and, and in a narrative. Um, so that was like the thing is I could totally sit down by myself and play out that story because I was like, you know, playing with my friends later in the day or earlier in the day. So it was about my time to sit and just watch a narrative unfold. Yeah, I speaking of narrative reminded me of this game called chameleon kid from uh i think it was on sega yeah and it was the strangest thing i mean like sonic was pretty strange if you write it down on paper sonic is weird as hell but like chameleon kid was this kid who would he would get certain powers depending on what he ate or something like that oh my god it was a 2d platformer and it was just i just remember it being so much fun because you could be all these different things. There's like sort of along Mario in that at realm mm. where Mario would gain certain powers depending on what he grabbed. Chameleon Kid also did this, but it was like the Sega version of it. Mm. That actually sparks a memory for me of narrative. It was literally, you would go page by page, was Comic Zone. I don't know if you ever played this one. I know Comic Zone as well. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it was literally like you would dive into a comic book and you'd see all the panels in that. And you were the little character that came in on a panel and you'd fought 
the bad guys in that panel and then you'd like rip the next like rip apart the next panel and you'd go into the next panel and it would like step you through a full comic book and it was just the coolest concept um and now i just have this another random aside it's like i'm just thinking about games that had a unique element uh comic zone was one another one was clay warriors or something and all the art style was all done with clay like the like it was all so it was like a fighting game like street fighter style but um all the characters were like these like there was like a snowman and like these other creatures and they're all artistically done up with clay and then isn't that game notoriously really bad but did you like it i loved it but you know what i didn't have much maturity or knowledge about like how good a game was at that point <laughs> um and there but there was one that was probably worse that i wish for the life of me i could remember because we could never find the game it could only play it in the arcades and we'd always go to play this and it was this game where you had your joystick and four buttons and each or four or five buttons i think it might have been five buttons and four of the buttons were allocated one was your left arm right arm left leg right leg and i think there was a button for your head and if you were fighting other characters, if you lost a limb, that button would stop working. So you would lose an <laughs> arm and you could only punch with the other arm. And if you lost a leg, you could only kick with a leg and then you'd fall over. <laughs> it, was wow. the, it was, and I can't for the life of me, I, I haven't really researched it, but it was like, it was so gory. Cause if you try using the arm that was cut off, you'd just shoot blood out. <laughs> was, yeah. You'd just be like, squirt, squirt, punch, squirt. That's wild. That's like, um, Quop, which is a famous, like, online board game where you control the like flexion and um extension of your left leg and your right leg with four buttons and so you have to get into this rhythm of like alternating how you press the buttons and you try to make this guy like run across a track and the limbs are literally just like (laughs) 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 trying to like go forward (laughs) fall over yeah some people are crazy good at it uh anyway so many games. Also, I love the seafoam nails. Oh, thank yeah, you. Yeah, love it. <laughs> now, this brings us to our last piece uh, for this segment. It is a little bit on what style of gamer you are. So, to Michael first, would you say you're more of an explorer, an achiever, a socializer, or a competitor? I mean, it depends on the game. Uh, but I am probably, if I'm playing a game on my own, I'm more of an explorer. An explorer and achiever intertwined because I'm one of those people who likes to get 100% on every game if I'm playing it on my own. And my goal is to get every achievement that there is. Nowadays, it's so freaking hard to get all the achievements and things. There's such little things and you can't really, the games don't tell you what they are anymore. Even if you search them, it's like this long list of, oh, you have to do this. You have to get like, I don't know. 300 punches with your right arm as mm. Pikachu or something like ridiculous like that. And so now Punchy it's very Pikachu. Hard. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm one of those people who like to get every achievement, every, every trophy, every hidden thing. Um, well, actually one of my favorite first games that I remember ever doing that was Spider-Man on Xbox and it was like an open world in New York City and you got to swing through the buildings and it was uh i don't know if it was Spider-Man 2 i can it was a long time ago but i re- i was obsessed with it and i played it all the time and you had to like go up to like the top of buildings and take pictures as Peter Parker and you would ha- and then find like recordings around the city and stuff like that and it was like one of the first games where i remember getting 100% and it was i was very proud I spent like hours and hours, like probably days <laughs> in total. Mm. I, uh, I, I feel like I've evolved. I used to be an achiever, sort of like a completionist. I wanted like, and I would get the guidebooks, especially for like the um, Final Fantasy games. I would go through step by step and finish everything. But then eventually I realized I was like, it was taking away my joy of the game. And I became just more of an explorer. Like I wanted to like just see stuff and do stuff and it would sometimes throw me back into an achiever space where i'm like i want to go into this little place because i want to do the side quest but it's more about exploring it Mm -hmm. um i've never been much of competitor for sure i guess i'm I'm, I'm more either an explorer or socializer for sure david um yep pretty similar i think we're we're peas in a pod um (laughs) i definitely like exploring uh i'll occasionally like doing the achievements 
if the core mechanics are just like fun to explore like it kind of they like go hand in hand in a way mm -hmm. where it feels like if if the way um you know if the method to complete the challenge is interesting then i'll keep trying it but if the method is not interesting then i'm really i don't care about you know widget number five yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah, like like you both, I, I do like the social aspect and competing isn't really my thing. That's why I have like a love hate relationship with Smash Brothers because like it's really fun to smash. I really love the character designs and all their move sets and all of that stuff. But when it comes down to sitting with someone and being like, I'm going to beat the shit out of you. Like, I don't want to do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it feels awful. And I am the That opposite. only happens in the bedroom. <laughs> Nowhere else. <laughs> No, yeah, me and Fred are, like, so competitive with each other. <laughs> it's, it's like, almost to a detriment sometimes, but then we know, like, okay, we're not going to play this game for a while because it's affecting us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and to add on to this um, question, it's based on, if anyone's curious about these uh, categories, it's based on the Bartle types of player dynamics, um, B-A-R-T-L-E, <laughs> and I replaced the word competitor with killer because nobody wants to be a killer, but like uh -huh. there are there are plenty of people who are into like first person shooters and MOBAs yeah. and all of these more competitive games where they just have the gene, the domination gene <laughs> where they like want to be the best um, and they totally get into like major league competitive gaming. Yeah. Well, that's one thing I never like. Sometimes video gaming brings out such a weird thing because I used to play Grand Theft Auto as a kid a lot. And it's like this weird, it's a very weird social experiment in that like it's stuff you would never, ever think about doing in real life. But then you're like, OK, I'm playing this video game. I'm like an anonymous person here. So, yeah, I'm going to kidnap this hooker and beat the shit out of her and then like steal all her money and then drive away and crash the car <laughs> oh we're talking about a game i was yeah. okay good. I was like, <laughs> this is awful yeah <laughs> well like you know not to get too deep on like games in general but there's this idea i can't remember if i said this in the last time we talked about media but um there's this classic example of the uncharted games where mm. Um, the player character, ha like normally the square button or whatever, is to punch and to attack. Mm -hmm. And so um, there's a section in the game where they were play testing and the player goes through a town and you see, um, you know, a lot of villagers, like old people, young people, like farmers, etc. And um, when they were play testing, the testers were like going through this town and they just started punching people um because <laughs> they had the ability to do it and uh -huh. so the game designers were like oh my god why are our testers so bloodthirsty uh -huh. <laughs> um and so then they did some brainstorming they're like what if we change the button for punching to waving um so then when you're in the town you walk through and you can press square and then you'll just wave at people and then they'll wave back and then they did the testing again and no tester was like why can't i punch these people they were just like oh this is just a stimulus this is just like an option that i have in this environment and i think that's really interesting and it speaks to like what um the design of the game uh, coaxes the player into what they do within yeah. that game. Oh, yeah, know? yeah. No design will lead your actions, right? Now, well, if they... there's a button for it, people are going to want to press it. <laughs> yeah, that's why they had to put, like, Wave Town next to Punchy Town so that people could go through and be like, hi, hi, and they cross over to the next town, like, bam, 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 bam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I love Uncharted, actually. It's really good. Same oh, with Laura God. Croft. That they they were great games. They were great narrative games. They had great character development and story, yeah. and uh, so good. Um, all right, I'm going to activate our bot one more time because we're going into our next segment. <laughs> Segway bot, go. Yes, we can. No, oh, your yeah. mic. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's good. It's Segway good. bot. <laughs> Became a cheerleader with a seizure. <laughs> that was amazing. Uh, thank you. So we're getting now, Michael, into the fun of the show, where we have a chance to have a bit of a comedic, improvised fun with yourself. Uh, 
Yes. And the game we selected today is called Audio Q. So Audio Q is an opportunity for each of us prior to this to go and collect a sound effect. Mm -hmm. uh, I have picked two myself. I don't know how yeah. many you collected. I and have two. Wonderful. David? Uh, I have one. Wonderful. So uh, we know who the underachiever is. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what can I say? I'm an explorer. <laughs> <laughs> he's not He's not an achievement-based person. Uh, and we are going to, each person's going to play their sound effects for the other two. Okay. And then we're going to do round robin style where um, one person has an opportunity to guess what it is. If they can't, then the other person back and forth until somebody gets it right. Or the person playing the sound decides like, neither you are getting this, you're out, you both fail. And we okay. just move on to the next one. Make sense? Yeah, I've never attempted to play a sound over Zoom, so I don't know. This is, it works. I assume you are familiar. <laughs> All right, so here is the sound effect. Let me know if you hear it. <laughs> I did hear that. Play it again. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> is, that a, is that a hippo? Nope. Robert, what's your guess? <laughs> My mother in heat. No, <laughs> um, I'm going to say an ox. Nope. That's uh, so let's, specific. Let's try uh, Michael again. Is it a... Can you play it again? Hold on, hold on. <laughs> it's that like weird uh, raspiness at the end that I'm... Um, alligator. Oh no! Same uh, continent though. Uh oh, same continent. Uh, is it an antelope? Nope. All right, we'll come back to me. I'll reveal it at the end. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, okay, cool. Go for it. Yay, technology! Oh my god, <laughs> so loud, <laughs> so visceral. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I gotta say Tuesday night for David. <laughs> it's just 20 seconds of I can, that. I can confirm that is not Tuesday nights for David. <laughs> um, I have a guess. Um, a dog lapping up water. Yeah, it is that. Exactly. Oh, shit. Holy moly. This is, this is my game. <laughs> you know what my guess was gonna be? Punching water. Oh. <laughs> I don't know why somebody would do that, but... Okay, so uh, Robert's turn. Okay. Um, I'm going to share. Oh, why did that give me shivers? <laughs> yeah. Deep that's, listen. that's very ASMR. Oh my god. It's like all around me. <laughs> yeah. Does it just make you feel to your core? Okay, I have a guess. Cat? Okay. Um... Well, I have a question, but I'll ask it after my guess. Um, somebody took a microphone and just dragged it across fabric. Ooh, uh, wrong. Okay. Uh, can you play it again? It like circles my head. Yeah, yeah. Um, literally went through the left and right audio channels. Yeah. Um, I I I was thinking the same thing, but um, it's very specific. You're close yeah. about the uh, the the. Is it SMR? Okay. Oh, okay. So is it just like someone rubbing two fabrics together? Ooh, I want more specificity, David. Go. Is David there? Like a more specific fabric, mean? Yes. Oh, did I cut out? Oh, fuck. All as well. I hear there. Okay, I'm 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 back. Okay. <laughs> um, somebody, yeah, they have the ASMR like dual microphone setup, and they took, God, what's it called? Not cellophane, but um, the jacket material, and they're just sort of like tickling jacket material, uh, <laughs> next to the microphone. <laughs> definitely tickling. Definitely scratching. Definitely a fabric. But Come on! One. But the wrong one, Michael. Wool. Yes! Whoa! That is wool. Nice. 
Oh, it's so loud. It's abrasive. I don't like it. I would not enjoy that as ASMR. Okay, next okay. down, go to Michael. Yeah, I'll stop. yeah, Michael, you had a second one, right? I do. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Share sound. Tuesday night for Michael. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I I think I know what it is. Um, a walrus. Close. Uh. A seal. <laughs> Fred. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> was, was Robert, Robert correct? Uh, Robert was close, but also no. Oh, um, sea lion. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. That was. I preferred my wool. Yeah. <laughs> I have one more. It's gonna be your last one. Okay. Yes, please. Okay, gotta stop Michael. I'm next. Sound only. Here we have it. Any guesses, Michael? I don't know. Oh. Yeah, go ahead, Michael. Uh I'm imagining that thing with a giant horns. It's not an ox, uh, but it's a, like a yak. No, no and yaks don't have horns. <laughs> yeah, they do. They? Yaks? I'm pretty sure they do. I'm oh, they sure have two do. horns. Oh, I thought yeah. you were talking single horn. Okay, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, my guess is Ibex. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Can you play it again? <laughs> That's uh, Robert's walk of shame. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Dragging yeah. my feet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, maybe a rhino. No. Oh, okay. Buffalo. No. You're right in the kind of right climate. I'm not sure if it's probably they're probably in two continents. <sighs> a. Uh, play it again. <laughs> It's like a watering hole or something. Ooh, they do go to watering holes. Yeah, because I can hear like all the animal, the birds and stuff. That's I thought it was yeah. a rhino. Uh, Giraffe? No. Uh, I'm going to give one more guess zebra. to you. No, zebras go make a weird yipping sound. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a... Oh! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. That is becoming a sound bite, by the way. Uh, I think that was... Oh, that was the, the extent of it. Okay, uh, one more guess each. Okay, play it again. Okay, let me rewind. Ah. Hold on, I have to reload the file, I think. How dare you. <laughs> um, is it a mountain goat? Nope. Uh. They bleat. Um, they have they yeah. they all I'll, I'll get help you with this. It is a uh, mammal. That doesn't help wow. at all. Uh, <laughs> well, it, it is a marsupial. Oh, is it a gorilla? That is not a marsupial. Gorillas aren't marsupials. No? Oh frick. <laughs> is it a kangaroo? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Sounds so kangaroos terrify me. They are so aggressive. Yeah. yeah, I heard. I have yet to go to Australia, but I want There's to. like a meme online somewhere where it's like a picture of a kangaroo in like a pond, I guess, with like water up to here staring at the photographer. And um, the person's like, oh, I wish I could go for a dip with him. And then somebody else commented, like, never enter a pond with a kangaroo. He's trying to lure you in there to drown you. Oh my, gosh. oh my god yeah um, so all right so the reveal of my mystery sound is an elephant it's oh an elephant growling oh. I, and yeah. yeah i've never heard an elephant growl I mean, yeah 
Wow. Well, well I hope people that, enjoyed like <laughs> the animal sound corner. <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> loved loved the animal sounds. Loved uh, us trying to cover up just our bedroom sounds with animal <laughs> yeah. recordings. Uh, that brings us to the end of our show. Michael Susia, do you have anything you want to take uh, away? It's Susa. <laughs> Susa. You even wrote it in <laughs> vernacular. You, uh, you'll be able to play it back. You said Susia. <laughs> yeah, you did. Did you I? Did. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I'm I'm evolving your name. Is the next echelon? Apparently, it's David Susia. 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 Uh, do you have anything to take away from the conversations today? No, just that I miss my friends. Aww. <laughs> I would say the same. Yeah. It is about social connection and missing people. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much, Michael. Do you have uh, anything you want to plug in terms of your channels? No. Um, I, I share when I live stream on Twitch to my Twitter, but that's really about it until things can start happening again. I might have a show in the works with a friend, but until things start happening... I'm not gonna say too much on it. It's just because we we are only in the groundwork of it. No worries. Well, uh, if you want to find Michael, it's uh, on Instagram at Michael John Sousa. On Twitter, it's underscore Michael underscore Sousa underscore. And on Twitch, it's Saint Mika three one. TikTok s dot Mika three one or Leet Speak for Michael. Yes. Yes, and thank you to you, the internet, and to our audience for listening to Tissues of the Day. You can follow David at BitButton on Twitter and Instagram, and you can follow myself at Robert F. Mackay on Instagram. So, thank you for joining us, and stay wet, internet. Uh, I agree. That's how I'm adding on to the the catchphrase. (laughs) (laughs) Wet. Done. Yeah. (laughs)